Chief Engineer, verify radio resume count and go for launch. Easy your teams go, Doug. Copy, Charlie, thank you. Shuttle, safety mission assurance. KSC safety mission assurance is go, Doug. Copy. Payload launch manager. Okay, Doug, on behalf of our partners from the uh, European Space Agency, the ISS team is ready to proceed. Copy, and range weather. Weather has no constraints for launch. I copy, very good. And ops manager, the launch and flight teams are ready to resume count. Okay, launch director, uh, ops manager, Doug, the uh, MMT is not working any issues. It looks like a really good day to go fly. You are go to launch. Okay, I copy that. And Atlantis, launch director. Launch director, Atlantis, go ahead, Doug. Well, Steve, for you and your crew, uh, Atlantis is ready to fly. All systems are go. In an effort that has spanned from one year to the next, teams from around the globe, both on Earth and in space, have overcome many obstacles to get us to this point. So on behalf of all of them, I'd like to wish you a successful mission and safe return. Uh, thanks very much, Doug. Uh, from the crew, we know the Columbus module has been uh, many years in the making, and uh, we're looking forward to doing our part to bring it up to uh, Peggy Whitson and our crew on the International Space Station and start its good work and uh, many, many years of science. Uh, we appreciate your team and all the folks in the shuttle program that have worked so hard over the last couple of months to get the uh, low-level cutoff sensors working. And it looks like, uh, based on today, they're working great. We really appreciate them fixing that problem. Uh, we're looking forward to a, a great flight and coming back to see our families in two weeks. I know it's been a hard road for them, especially with the slip, but it uh, looks like today is a good day and we're ready to go fly. NTD launch director. Go ahead. Terry, you are clear to resume the count and launch Atlanta. Happy, thank you. NTD ISL. Go ISL. Recorder activation complete. Thank you. And for all personnel, the countdown clock will resume in one minute, 20 seconds. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Five, four, three, two, one. T minus nine minutes and counting. Nine minutes and counting. Ground launch sequence are now controlling. Automatic sequence has been initiated. TLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. Atlantis OTC. Like Columbus before you, you've braved adversity. We wish you smooth sailing to the new world among the stars. Thanks very much, uh, Jerry. We're looking forward to race flight. ELT, OTC, perform APU pre-start. OTC, PLT, APU pre-start, should work. Main engines now being steered through their final checks. Final steering check before main engine ignition. T-minus two minutes, two minutes to launch of Atlantis with the Columbus Laboratory. T-minus 31 seconds. The handoff to Atlantis is on board. Computers has occurred. Fifteen seconds. Range safety systems armed. Sound suppression system water activated. T-minus ten, nine, eight. Go for maintenance and start. Seven, six. Main engine ignition. Four, three, two, one. So, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis as Columbus sets sail on a voyage of science to the space station. Houston now controlling. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Columbus weighs anchor from its port in Florida. Atlantis on the proper alignment, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit, taking aim on the International Space Station for docking on Saturday. 28 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines soon will throttle back to 72% of rated performance, going in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. 
Atlanta's three miles in altitude, seven miles downrange. 50 seconds into the flight, the engine's beginning to throttle back up, standing by for that call from Capcom Jim Dutton. Atlantis, go at throttle up. Atlantis copies, go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Steve Frick, joined on the flight deck by pilot Alan Poindexter, Rex Walheim, and Leland Melvin. Seated down on the mid-deck are Stan Love and Hans Schlegel and Leopold Ayarts of the European Space Agency. Ayarts hitching a ride to his new home on the International Space Station. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already 15 miles in altitude, 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 2,000 miles an hour. Three good main engines, three good fuel cells, three auxiliary power units, all functioning normally. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms a good solid rocket booster separation, good staging. Guidance now converging, the onboard computers commanding the main engines to swivel, aiming Atlantis for its precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff. Beginning to roll to a heads up position now. Atlantis's computers commanding the main engines to swivel. Rolling to the heads-up position provides Atlantis with more favorable communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system heading toward orbit. Atlantis, single-engine Zaragoza 104. Single-engine Zaragoza 104. Atlantis, press to Miko. Press to Miko. That call from Capcom Jim Dutton to Commander Steve Frick indicating that should we lose a main engine now, we have enough velocity to reach nominal orbital cutoff targets. However, we're flying on three good main engines, all the other systems in good shape as well. Your shutdown plan is nominal. You are go for the plus X, go for the pitch. As Atlantis enters its preliminary orbit, it will do so at a velocity of 17,500 miles an hour, 20 seconds of powered flight remaining. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff, now standing by for the commands for external tank separation. Atlantis, no action on the cabin DPDT, it's a deucer. Spectacular view of Atlantis separating from its external tank. Atlantis now in its preliminary...